thing is the Kano model. And um, this one's an interesting one because it's uh, kind of hard to quantify, but it's a great framework for thinking through features that you might want to build. So um, we'll start first with the um, kind of the, uh, the axes here. So we have on one axis, on one side we have, does this thing deliver customer delight? Right? On a, is it low customer delight or is it high customer delight? And then, and then on the lower side, it's product function. And what we mean by that is, like, how much uh, investment are you putting into a particular feature? So as you can see that over time, on one side, on the lower left side, product function or investment is almost non-existent. I haven't put any sort of investment or development effort into this particular initiative. And on the high, on the high end of the far right, I put a lot of effort and investment into this particular feature. So, um, and so on this grid or on this axis, you can uh, plot these different features. And features fall into three different buckets. You can have basic features. So in the Kano model, they're called threshold features. And these are features that simply need to be there in order for your product to be competitive, okay? So customers expect these features to be here. So we just heard a comment about, you know, those are the features that wind up getting bubbled up to the top because you get a lot of customer requests for those. So those might be threshold features. Cut the customers, if, if you don't have these features or you lack too many of these features, they're gonna move to a competitor or they're not gonna be satisfied with your product. Okay? We call them dissatisfiers. A dissatisfier, sure. So, um, so, but here's the, here's the thing with this model, is that like the payables function of an accounting package, you can pour a whole lot of time and money into that feature over years, and you, over time, are gonna start to get diminishing returns of customer delight, okay? So these basic features that need to be there, use caution in continuing to invest in them, because you're gonna get diminishing returns. So the goal is to delight customers. And by adding in more features onto the payables function, you may not get more delight out of it. So then the next bucket of features are the performance features. So what that means is that your product is faster and better, right? And this is particularly true for web-based software, where you can be putting in more investment and more time uh, into making your product better and faster. And you will get a linear amount of customer delight back. Customers want your product to be faster. And if you stop investing in that, your competitors will catch up to you or uh, surpass you. So, so you want to continue over time to invest in these performance type features. And then there are these excitement features. And excitement features are interesting because customers may not know that they want them to begin with. So your job as a product manager is to be able to understand the customer problem that you're trying to solve, and then to be able to solve that in a unique way, right? So if you um, find these little excitement features, and you build those into the product, you're gonna get a disproportionate amount of customer delight out of it. Okay. So, um, so I'll give you an example. So at, um, uh, at Appolio, um, as I mentioned, it's property management software. And property managers spend a ton of time on Craigslist, you know, posting, posting uh, rentals, right? And they're required, the property manager is required to refresh that listing every single day. And it takes a ton of time. And so we built a little widget that just posted for you on Craigslist. And it, People loved this feature. They loved it. It helped sell this accounting package that in their eyes didn't have as much value. Of course, we spent 90% of our effort building this accounting package. But we got a disproportionate amount of customer delight by building this widget that saved them time. They didn't know that this was even possible, that something like this could happen, right? Now today, I, this is a few years ago today, there are lots of tools that do that sort of thing. Uh, but at the time, that was definitely an exciting feature for them. And so what we do, and what you can do as, pro as uh, product managers, is continue to invest in those sorts of excitement features. Invest in finding those 
those features and invest in building out those features because you're going to get this disproportionate amount of customer telemetry.